Welcome to episode 116. Are you ready for the adventure of a lifetime? No matter your destination, the travel specialists at 3D Travel Company are there to help. Just head on over to my website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click the Book Now button on the left-hand side to get your free quote today. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. Today's special guest is the voice of 13 from My Hero Academia, Jacqueline from Show by Rock, and so much more. Here are a couple clips of both 13 and Jacqueline, and then our interview with today's special guest. I hope you all enjoy. Hello everyone, I've been waiting for you. <gasps> it's the space hero 13, the chivalrous pro who's rescued a ton of people from disasters across the world. <laughs> What's up, yo? I'm the drummer Jacqueline. How goes it? <laughs> now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today on the show, I am so excited to be bringing you an interview with Morgan Berry. Morgan, thanks so much for joining me today. Hi, thank you for having me. Hey, it is my pleasure, young lady. Well, you know, the very first thing we always like to do when we have a special guest on the show for the first time is to get to know them. And so tell me, who was the young girl, Morgan Berry, growing up, and how did she become the woman she is today, and especially the actress and voice actress that you've become? <laughs> well... Um, when I was younger, I was also a huge anime fan, awesome. so not much has changed, <laughs> but um, I was obsessed with Pokemon, oh, yeah. uh, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Digimon, and just uh, those were my gateway anime shows, and man, I was a little nerd growing <laughs> up, <laughs> but you know, that's not bad. I mean, no, I, was, no. I had fun, and um, yeah, and I'm a triplet, so I grew up with uh, two other sisters, and yeah, and so you know, it was a it was an all right childhood. It wasn't bad. Anime made it, you know, bearable. <laughs> I never uh, even dreamed that I would be able to voice an anime because the thing is, ever since I was a kid, I've loved the performing arts. I love singing. I love acting, and it's something I've been doing for years. And I really, um, I started acting when I was maybe eleven, I believe. Just yeah, um, starting with school theater. And then I joined a performing arts program in my area and yeah, and it was a lot of fun. And I joined a choir as well. And uh, I was in a girl band at one point. Ooh, very cool. <laughs> yeah. For like <laughs> seven years, I think we like traveled and put on concerts all over America. And it was just a lot of fun. I love every aspect of the performing arts, whether it's being on stage or even behind the scenes, um, stage managing and you know, uh, d directing and cast casting it. Like I've done it all. Wow. And it's, and I enjoy every part of it. That's really awesome. Well, you know, you mentioned singing and I was looking you up and doing some research for this interview. And I was like, holy cow, I saw all these cover songs of animes that you were singing. Now, are those actually cover songs that you did for the shows or just for fun? Just for fun. I okay. wish they were on the shows. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I just, uh, I started doing those covers in like late December, 2013, Okay. like okay. late 2013. And yeah. And the thing is, I, I love anime. I love singing and there's just so many good opening and ending songs out there. And you know what? I just thought to myself, you know, I want to hear this in English. What is this in English? I want to hear <laughs> someone singing in English. And when I couldn't really find a cover that was really up to my standards. I, I guess, you know, I'm picky. Yeah. And I, yeah. I just, I'm picky about lyrics, about voices. And so I didn't find one I liked. And so I was like, you know what? I'm a singer. I'll make one myself. And so <laughs> it started with the Attack on Titan opening. And at the time, I didn't have a good microphone because I, you know, I was just getting started. Yeah. And this was before I even really started voice acting. So I didn't really know much about audio and editing or anything like that at the time. So I, I whipped up some, I found some lyrics, you know, and I put it together. And then the more covers I did, I decided I was going to put my own lyrics together because I'm picky about lyrics. It's got to rhyme. It's got to make sense. It's got to hit every syllable it does in the Japanese. Wow. It's got to sound. That's my goal. I want it to sound just like it does. I love that. In the original Japanese, just in English. Like I, it needs to rhyme because that's just how songs work. 
And it, I, I'm not going to add an extra syllable just to fit the lyrics in. I want it to stay true to the original lyrics, but I also need it to sound good. And so sometimes when you do direct translations, it ends up not making sense. And so I have to work around that, make sure I get the message across without, you know, without changing it too much. So it's a challenge, but it's worth it once I get the finished product out. And I'm I actually just finished some lyrics a few days ago. Um, I was on my way back from LA and the plane trip was just so long. So I decided I'm going to work, finish these lyrics. And so I did, and I'm going to be recording that soon and posting it. Hopefully by next month, the beginning of next month, I'm hoping. So I can put that out there and uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, that is really awesome. Now, do you translate yourself or do you have somebody that helps you translate if there's not an English version out there already to kind of go off of? Or how do you do that, Morgan? I used to just find the translations online, but now I know people who speak fluent Japanese and they also help me. Yeah, And so I seek guidance from them <laughs> to get those I legit love translations. Because like you said, sometimes the, the translations that exist are very like, are you kidding me? Like who translated yeah. this? You know, <laughs> like, right. So like this really makes cool. no sense. <laughs> yeah. Like you're like those words in that sentence don't even make any cohesive thought, you know, <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, but they've direct translated it and just, you know, and that's how some of the original animes were done. And so sometimes when they spoke, you were kind of like, excuse me, what did they say? <laughs> <You know>? Right. <laughs> but you know, as they've kind of gone and, and re looked at some of those and kind of gone back to the origins of the shows and come back and re, uh, re recorded them with new actors and actresses to kind of, uh, you know, and they've done that with sailor moon, in fact, um, because they were trying to get it back to its original roots and it's, uh, you know, true story and true dialogue and I like that they've done that because uh, you know they're trying to get things where they were supposed to be in the first place you know so right. It's really yeah. cool. Well, I'm so glad that you shared that with us. I think your voice is extremely beautiful, and I think they really should use you for the actual songs in anime because you have a killer voice. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You're very welcome. <laughs> well, you know, looking at your career, Morgan, I noticed that One Piece looked like it was your first anime project to work on where you voiced Charlay, I believe is how her name is pronounced. Was that your first anime that you worked on? or? It was not, actually. Okay. Um, the thing is, when it comes to behind the voice actors, they post the characters in order from when the show began in 2004. I did not start voice acting in 2004. Definitely not because uh, <laughs> I'm 25 right now. So <laughs> um, I started acting when I was when I was in 2004. So, you know, I was young. Um, but I, my my first role named role was Linda in Hyperdimension Neptunia, the animation. Okay. And that was in, um, I got that role in late 2014, but that didn't come out on DVD till 2015. So I guess that's when I made my official debut was 2015. 2015. Okay. Wow. So, I mean, within the last two or three years, you've really, I would yeah, two years, almost three now, uh, you've really done a ton in your career, which has been pretty amazing. Thank you. It's uh, Man, I never, never expected this to happen, but I'm really grateful it did. Yeah. And it's a, a funny story how it happened. Oh, uh, tell us, please. <laughs> okay. So um, I, I was always involved with the performing arts, and I was uh, a part of the performing arts program, and I was fixing on leaving. I'd been a part of it for years, and I knew it was time for me to go, but I was like, well, how am I going to pay rent if I'm leaving? <laughs> <laughs> like, I need another job lined up. Um, and so I uh, was just on Facebook of all places. And I saw that Todd Habercorn was having a, a convention called Habercon. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And I was like, at the time, you know, I was like, you know what? I really want to meet him. Like I've never met him before. I, this would be cool. And I read further and it said that there was going to be a voice acting competition oh, at nice. his con. Yeah. And if you won the voice acting competition, you would win an audition at Funimation. Wow. Yeah. And so, you know what? I, I thought, you know what? I'm an actor. I've been wanting to pursue more of more acting rather than singing because I was a part of a girl band and that became my whole life. I ended up doing more singing than I did acting. And so I decided, you know what? I want to pursue more acting. I miss it. Um, and so I decided, you know what? I'm going to go to this con and I'm going to participate and see what happens. And, you know, <laughs> I was hardcore praying just like, all right, Jesus, if this is what you want for me, then I guess it'll happen. So I went and I participated and I won. And I, I was just like, what? Okay, this is cool. <laughs> and so, 
yeah, and that's how I got my first audition at Funimation. Wow. And uh, I that convention was in November of 2013. And when 2014 rolled around, I had my first audition February 17th, 2014. And nothing came out of that first audition, though. So, you know, after a few months rolled by, I was like, oh, man, I must have I must have sucked, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like but like I won the contest. So, of course, I didn't suck. But at the same time, you know, those are the thoughts that roll around in your mind, yeah, you know, yeah. and just um, but then finally I got called in a few months later to record for fairy tale just as additional voices. That's where I started. That's where most people start, you know, doing Walla sessions uh, and Walla sessions is when a bunch of. Uh, you know, maybe three to five actors get in the booth and record background lines because WALA stands for with all actors. And it's just when actors get together to do crowd scenes and uh, yeah, just background lines. And so that's, those are fun, but yeah, so uh, that was my first session was for fairy tale. And then maybe just like a few weeks later, I got my first named role as Linda in hyperdimension Neptunia, the animation and then I got my first lead just just five months after I got my first um, gig with wow. Fairy Tale. That's epic. Yeah, that, that was exciting. And it, <laughs> you know what's funny? What? Is uh, my audition for Riddle Story of Devil, where I got the role of Tokaku, my first lead. That audition landed Febu- on February 17th, 2015. <laughs> wow. Dang. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. Literally a year later, the first audition I ever had, nothing came of it. But then a year later, I got my first lead. And that's crazy, you know? Yeah, dang, girl. I mean, you've really been moving and grooving. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Morgan, I believe you're working on a project as Yoshko in Love Live Sunshine. Is that correct? Yes, it is. That's awesome. Well, what are some other anime projects that you have worked on that have been some of your favorite to voice uh, or other projects that we haven't discussed as of yet? I voice for Madame Charlie in One Piece. I also voice for 13, the space hero in My Hero Academia. Awesome. I voice for Sayo Simonji in Token Rambu, Kitakami in Konkole, um, Chuta in Eld Live. That one was a lot of fun. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and a few others. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, oh yeah. And I, you know what? Sometimes I forget to mention my video game roles. Uh, for, as for video games, I voice for Silver Sable in Marvel Avengers Academy. Oh, epic. And yeah, that's a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, I had to have a Russian accent for that role. <laughs> I love Silver Sable. They brought her into the 1994 animated series. Uh, yeah. So she's a really cool character. I love that. that was I love her. She's epic. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And to do anything with Marvel is just super epic. I mean, that's a great, uh, great thing to have on your roster of things that you voiced for, for sure. Yeah, I was super stoked to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Well, what what are some of the inspirations that you had uh, besides being so young and getting into acting and stuff? Were there any actors or TV shows that you watched as a kid that were really uh, your inspiration? My inspiration for acting, you know, I just, I don't know. I just, I loved, I loved actors. I loved all of them. I think one of my favorites was Anne Hathaway. Okay. But... I oh and Meryl Streep she's amazing and <laughs> <laughs> but I just I loved performing the feeling of stepping out on stage and becoming another person was just exhilarating to me also I mean I loved watching TV as many people do but it was, <laughs> right. it was just I don't know it was just it was a a getaway from from reality. And so that was my, that was my escape, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, how can fans reach out to you, Morgan? Do you have social media or a website or how can people get in touch with you? Whether they're question, you know, have questions about the voiceover world, or maybe they're even looking to hire you for a project. Well, I am on Twitter at the Morgan Berry. I'm also on Instagram at the Morgan Berry and Facebook at the Morgan Berry. Fantastic. And if, yeah. And if, but if anyone wants to, um, reach out to me for con appearances or um, voiceover gigs, they can reach my, they can reach me at my website. That's the morganberry.com. Fantastic. Well, you've got some really great tags. It was great that you were able to keep them all the same and get such a great website address too. 
thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it always makes it easier for findability and for promotion reasons. It's not like some off the chart name and you're like, what? <laughs> right. I think the only difference, the only one that's different is my YouTube. Because okay. when I first started my YouTube, it was, uh, I wanted to stay unknown, like an anonymous uh, character. But yeah. after a while, I realized I couldn't do that. So, But that <laughs> one is an unknown songbird. Okay. So if you just if you just type in on YouTube the unknown songbird, it should come up. Yeah. So that's the only difference <laughs> with my social media accounts. That's fantastic. Well, with some of those uh, videos that you've created, maybe you can use those as promotional material to hopefully get some jobs as the voice for some upcoming animes to actually do their songs. Oh, I would love that. I'm not really sure how how to push that, but I mean, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, I think it would be great if there's a way for you to find a, an outlet to get into that. That'd be great, you know, uh, especially with trying to get the uh, yeah. the full Japanese versions and, and not just the direct translation, which would be fantastic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's looking at breaking into this world of acting, Morgan, and specifically the world of voice acting? Definitely acting classes, acting workshops, any acting classes that you can get involved in theater, whether it's your theater department at school or a local theater in your area, just build up your acting resume and grow in the art because that's what voice acting is. It's acting. And that's where I started. And definitely it's of the utmost importance. If you want to be a voice actor, you have to be an actor and you have to you have to know how it's done. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Morgan, thank you so much for sharing your advice and your social media. I have one final question for you, and we will wrap this interview up. And the question is, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? Hmm, that's a deep question. <laughs> <laughs> I guess love and peace. And I know that sounds really cheesy and generic, but it's important to me. And I feel like it should be more important to others, you know love one another, no matter the color of their skin, no matter their sexual orientation, no matter their religion, love them and just keep the peace going, you know? And I'm a Christian, but I'm not going to shun someone who doesn't believe in the same things I do, you know? And I, I just, I wish more people were like that, yeah. you know, just spreading the love and peace. And so that's the kind of legacy I want to leave is one of love and acceptance definitely acceptance and uh yeah <laughs> well it's been absolutely wonderful having you on the show today morgan it's been an absolute honor and pleasure would you please just give us a close out today is 13 the space hero yes i can <laughs> this is morgan berry and you just heard me on who did that voice plus ultra well, everyone, I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode with Morgan Berry, the voice of 13 from My Hero Academia, and so much more. And if you did, please find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram by searching Who Did That Voice? I would love to hear from you. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us next time for our special guest, Amber Nash, the voice of Pam Poovey from Archer. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself, who did that voice? Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice.